This is the Dollamore Daily, and I'm Jesse Dollamore. Like many Americans, this weekend I was left uh, saddened and worried, um, nervous about the future, all because Ruth Bader Ginsburg died. I'm not going to go into the bio uh, of Ruth Bader Ginsburg because all of that's out there. She she was a, a, a lion. You're going to hear that she was just an icon of the American judicial system. She did much, much good for the forwarding of human rights, the forwarding of equality in our country. She will be missed more than a regular person who dies, that their, their absence is noted. She, she will be missed because of the loss and the danger. Uh, unfortunately, we have a system where one person can die and people fear for their, the, the way they will be treated, the way they will be viewed as not equal in our society. Right now, we have an eight-person court. Five, three. Three, what are considered liberals on the court, and five appointed by conservatives. Many of those five are radical nutters. Right now, we're in a situation in America where women's reproductive health is in jeopardy. LGBTQ rights are in jeopardy. We have a president who is forwarding radical immigration policies. All of that is in jeopardy. The refugees, immigrants in detention camps that are being sterilized by Donald Trump's administration. Voting rights are in question now. They were in question before, but now they're, it's a juggernaut court. And Donald Trump's going to get another pick. And Donald Trump is likely going to get another pick I mean, it's very likely Donald Trump is going to get another pick through. He's going to nominate, and they're going to be confirmed. Which is going to mean, <clears throat> listen to this. This is going to mean that there will be six Supreme Court justices serving on the bench who have been picked from a party that has only won the popular vote one time in over 30 years. Six, because of our anti-democratic electoral college system. 30 years, over 30 to 32 years that the Republican Party has won the popular vote one time. 2004, George W. Bush versus John Kerry. To me, that's illegitimate that we give this, this portion of Western states that have very few people living in them an equal vote for President of the United States based on population. They get, they get the equal vote because they're just a state. They're a, they're a land mass. There are more people in Los Angeles County than in these series of states. This landmass of states is over a half a million square miles. And it's like 4,700 square miles in Los Angeles County. Anti-democratic. Not undemocratic. Anti-democratic. And the Republican Party uses it to their benefit. Now listen, this weekend, there's been a lot of clips. I shared some clips, and I'm going to play a couple clips here today, of Mitch McConnell, who is the majority leader of the United States Senate, a vile and odious character, and Lindsey Graham, who is the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee, who will take up a nomination to the court. And a lot of people online, if you're on Twitter, you know how it, it, it goes. But on Twitter, they were like, Quit saying that they're hypocrites because it's not going to change any of their minds. Saying, pointing out Mitch McConnell's hypocrisy or Lindsey Graham's naked 
uh, servile nature toward Donald Trump, that's not going to change their minds. And I would submit to you that pointing it out and talking about it isn't trying to change the minds of those those uh, individual hip hypocrites. It is to possibly wake people up who go through life in a fog saying or thinking that Republicans are hypocrites, but not really understanding the depths to which Republicans will sink to keep a grip on power. Because not everybody is as involved as, let's say, you or me. So it is important to point it out and to keep pointing it out until people start to wake from their slumber. Let's start with a first piece of hypocrisy. Back when Merrick Garland, an appointee to the Supreme Court by President Obama, his nomination was, was railroaded. He was nominated to the court. I don't know if I just said he was appointed. Uh, he was nominated to the court. His, his, his confirmation didn't make it past the Senate. They didn't even take it up. They wouldn't even meet with him in private meetings. And, and the justification from Mitch McConnell was this. As senators, it leaves us with a choice. Will we allow the people to continue deciding who will nominate the next justice? Or will we empower a lame duck president to make that decision on his way out the door instead? The Senate will appropriately revisit the matter after the American people finish making in November the decision they've already started making today. So if a justice is nominated in the, in the last year of a president's term, ah, we should leave it to the people to pick who will, to, to decide who will be the next president to, to, to choose that Supreme Court justice. That's the... That's the line of, of, of reasoning. Uh, a couple years later, a year and change later, no, no, three years later, that, that was February uh, 23rd, 2016, in, in May of 2019, at a political fundraiser, Mitch McConnell was asked the question, what happens if, if a Supreme Court justice dies uh, during Donald Trump's last year? Here's what he said. Uh, we'd fill it. <laughs> uh, we'd fill it. And then uproarious laughter. Because they're all in on the joke. That we're fascist hypocrites. We don't care about our promises. Our word means nothing. Our arguments, we don't really believe in. We just make them to keep our grip on power. Lindsey Graham, maybe even worse. This was before Donald Trump was elected. They sat in a conference meeting with the Judiciary Committee. And he said specifically, hold my words against me. This is the rationale we're using and I want you to remember that I said this and hold it against me if this same thing happens later. Watch this. This is the last year uh, of a lame duck president. And if Ted Cruz or Donald Trump get to be president, they've all asked us not to confirm or take up a selection by President uh, Obama. So if a vacancy occurs in their last year of their first term, guess what? you will use their words against them. I want you to use my words against me. If there's a Republican president in 2016 and a vacancy occurs in the last year of the first term, you can say, Lindsey Graham said, let's let the next president, who it, whoever it might be, make that nomination. And you could use my words against me and you'd be absolutely right. And you could hold my words against me and you absolutely should because you'd be right. And now, this sycophant, this bootlicking scumbag is singing a whole different tune. Disgusting. That was before Donald Trump was elected. Here is after Donald Trump was elected, 
still saying the same thing. If an opening comes in the last year of President Trump's term and the primary process has started, we'll wait to the next election. And I've got a pretty good chance of being the judiciary. You're on the record. Yeah. All right. Hold the tape. If a vacancy occurs during the, for the final year of Donald Trump's first uh, term in office and the primary process has already started, we'll wait till the next year. Well, the primary process is well over. We have our Democratic nominee and vice presidential nominee for the presidency, Lindsey Graham. The moderator says, you're on the record. You're being recorded. He goes, yeah, hold the tape. Well, we held the tape, you vile, spineless worm. And here we are. And I want everybody to remember this. Democrats break their backs playing by the rules. Having respect for institutional norms, traditions of the House and of the Senate. And what does it get them? Not only what does it get them, what does it get us? as the American people. And that brings us to what our, what's our solution here? Article three, section one of our constitution states that the judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. The courts don't organize themselves. Congress does. The Constitution has given the Congress the right to organize the courts. And the Supreme Court has not always been nine members. Re reading from the, 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 the SCOTUS website, from, from the very website of the Supreme Court, the Constitution elaborated neither the exact powers and prerogatives of the Supreme Court, nor the organization of the judicial branch as a whole. Thus, it was left to Congress and to the justices of the court through their decisions to develop the federal judiciary and a body of federal law. The number of justices on the Supreme Court changed six times before settling at the present total of nine in 1869. So there is no rule about nine justices. What we need to do is pack the court. We need to expand the Supreme Court. They're going to go through with this because that's what they do. I'm going to read you two tweets from uh, Ibram X. Kendi, the author of Stamp from the Beginning and How to Be Anti-Racist. Two books that you should absolutely pick up. But he nails it here. And we need to expand the court to 11 or 13 or 15, especially if they do this. Because they are inexorably changing the makeup of not only the court, but of judicial decisions, appellate decisions that will come down over the course of a generation. This will ripple out across hist the history of our country in a way that is not kind to those viewed as others. Immigrants, black and brown people, gay people. This is a nightmare for women and, and, and what, it, what it speaks to their, their reproductive health choices. A nightmare. This is sending us back in time to pre-1973 America. Ibram Kendi tweeted, Fascist power doesn't care about consistency, rules, fairness precedence, truth. Fascist power does not respond to appeals to its hypocrisy, its lies, its unfairness, its destruction. Fascist power only responds to power. Fascist power only cares about power. So Democrats got to stop it. Joe Biden has been sour on the idea of uh, expanding the Supreme Court. And I would submit to you, Mr. Vice President, that the rules of old no longer apply. 
the way you've done things for the 40 or so years you've been in, in public service no longer apply. Mitch McConnell is a special kind of villain, a sinister character, a fascist who aids and abeds the crimes of our fascist president, Donald Trump, our white supremacist president, Donald Trump. Lindsey Graham is nothing but a sycophant. Just licking the boots of Donald Trump. <sighs> Ibram Kendi, the message of the Democratic Party should be if McConnell restricts democracy by ramming through a Supreme Court nominee, then after the election, the Democrats expand the Supreme Court to expand democracy. Hashtag expanding court expands democracy. Pointing out their hypocrisy isn't to get them to change their ways. It's to point out to others so they can, it's sounding the alarm to those who've been sleeping a little long while the alarm was already going. Waking people up to the reality of our situation. That it isn't business as usual. And if you weren't planning to vote, you better get your ass out there. You better make sure you're registered. You better request your ballot if you don't feel comfortable going to a polling place. If, if early void, voting has started in your area, in your municipality, get out there and vote. We're seeing Trump supporters out there protesting early voting or whatever the hell they're doing. Intimidating voters at the polls. Blocking as best they can entrance to the, to the polls. Protesting voting? This is where we are. You need to get out there and vote. Not just you. Talk to a family member, a friend, a neighbor, a colleague. If you've never voted before, this had better be the year. And not just for your own sake. Listen, <clears throat> if Donald Trump dismantles Obamacare, it's not going to affect me. I have health insurance. I have the privilege of, of, of not being affected by the crimes against humanity that will be performed. I'm not going to be thrown in a detention center, a concentration camp at the border, because I'm already a citizen. I'm not a member of the LGBT community, so my rights won't be stripped away or chipped away at. I'm a white guy in America. This country was built to serve me. I have the privilege of that. But I'm going to get out there and vote because I care about the people who will be affected. And you should too. Anyway, I would love to know what you think. I share, I'm sure, as many of you do, sadness and, and despair right now. But I, I'm going to fight through it. Because now is the time to fight. 714-576-4054. Of course, you can email me daily at dollamore.com. I sure do appreciate you guys uh, engaging with my content subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing my videos. Uh, we're, we're Together, we're getting the word out, and it's important. I would also ask that you consider, just consider being a channel member here for fewer than $2 a month. You can help support independent voices like mine, the independent work of uh, analysis of the news, of, of commentary, of, of a new style, a new breed of journalist in our world. Um, click the join button there. You can become a channel member for a little bit. Uh, I love you guys. I appreciate you very much. I'll see you next time. Be genuine. Take care of one another.